uh, Dr. Ian Jones uh, from the University of Toronto. So Dr. Ian Jones is a postdoc, postdoctoral research fellow working with the Sam Forest Health Lab and Agric Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. His research focuses on the ecology of insect, insect, and insect-plant interactions. And Ian received a master's degree in applied entomology from Imperial College London and completed his PhD at Florida International University. And Ian's postdoctoral work fo focuses on classical biological control of invasive plant. All right, awesome. I'll hand it over to you. All right. No, well, thank you very much again. So I'm going to talk today about uh, biological control of invasive knotweed. And specifically, I'm going to talk about some leaf roll galling that we're seeing on knotweed in response to feeding by a newly collected or relatively newly collected uh, population of the biological control agent Afalara itadori. So I'll show you that biological control agent here. Um, it's a psyllid. Um, it's the only biological control agent that we have licensed to release on knotweed. And it's been released for a long time. So first of all, it was released in the UK in 2010 and more recently in Canada and the US. Um, but despite extensive research uh, kind of release programs in those respective areas, we've never actually seen long term establishment of these insects over many seasons, over many years. And it seems that that's in large part due to high levels of mortality of the nymphs. So things like desiccation, they're very susceptible to, and predation, these are the things that seem to be impacting the insect's uh, ability to establish in the introduced range. So in an attempt to address that, CABI UK went back to Japan in 2019 and collected a new population of these psyllids from an area called Murakami. And the instantly exciting thing about these particular psyllids was that their feeding on knotweed caused this really impressive leaf uh, roll galling damage that you can see on the left hand side here. So what's nice about these leaf roll galls is that they stunt the plant's growth, which is obviously good for biological control. But it's the formation of these kind of uh, sheltered, humid structures that we think can actually mitigate some of those nymphal mortality factors and improve the possibility of us getting these insects established in the introduced range. So we've conducted in the last year or so um, a whole range of lab and field experiments to address these two major questions. So the first one being what behavior or activity in these psyllids is it that actually causes this leaf roll galling? And understanding that will enable us to kind of try and maximize the amount of galling that we can produce in, in release sites. And the second question is, do these leaf roll galls actually improve psyllid survival? So to address that first question, what behavior uh, in these psyllids causes leaf roll galling? We ran a series of experiments where we introduced um, psyllids of different developmental stages that you can see on the left hand side there. And we introduced them to knotweed leaves of different developmental stages as well. So ranging from brand new emerging leaves to leaves that have fully unfurled and look like kind of almost expanded leaves. And then we isolated those interactions in these mesh jewelry bags that you can see on the right hand side. And what all of those interactions and experiments taught us was that it's introducing these early instar nymphs to very young leaves that leads to the formation of these impressive leaf roll galls. So that's how we can hopefully maximize the production of these galls in the field. The second question, do leaf roll galls improve psyllid survival? Uh, we addressed in both lab and field studies where we looked at psyllid survival on leaves or branches with and without artificial leaf roll galls. So to create these artificial galls, um, you can see the diagram on the left. We just folded over a leaf in a part of the leaf where the galls often form and held it in place with two hair clips and then compared survival of those nymphs on leaves with artificial galls versus control leaves without artificial galls. And we found both in the lab and in the field that over the course of five weeks, we saw increased survival of those nymphs in the presence of artificial galls. And you can see from this photo on the right here, this is after four or five weeks, we see increasing psyllid activity inside those artificial galls 
So here a leaf has been opened back up where the artificial gall was. And you see very little activity outside of those galls. So clearly from these results, the, the humid sheltered conditions that those, those artificial galls provided were beneficial, if not necessary for survival and development of these nymphs. So to conclude, psyllid releases in the future should be conducted early in the season or in conjunction with cutting treatments. And that's to make sure that feeding by very early instar nymphs coincides as much as possible with the presence of very young leaves. And that's how we're going to maximize the amount of leaf roll galling that we see uh, in the field. Secondly, leaf roll galling does have the potential, we believe, to mitigate against these nymphal mortality factors and improve establishment in the introduced range. So I'm hopeful um, that in the coming years, we'll have much better news for you in terms of um, the establishment of these insects in the introduced range, particularly on bohemian knotweed, where these Murakami uh, psyllids perform the best. So I'll just finish by saying thank you to all my, my funders um, and thank you to you for listening. I likely don't have much time for, for questions, uh, but I'll make sure I put my email in the, the chat so anyone can, can get in contact if they want to. And I'll be there on the chat to answer any questions. All right, thank you. You speak a couple times about your research and it just definitely shows a lot of promise towards controlling these really invasive knotweeds and hopefully getting them under control. Uh, I don't see any questions in our Q&A, but if you want to go ahead and put your information in the chat and if anyone has a question for Ian, please feel free to ask um, him that in the chat. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Ian. I'm going to move ahead to our next presenter. Thank you, Emily.